In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve this bomb calorimeter problem. But before we go into it, I want to highlight the difference between the coffee cup calorimeter and the bomb calorimeter. So in the coffee cup calorimeter, we're basically going to use a cup. Ideally made up of styrofoam because styrofoam is a good thermal insulator. So we're going to have some water in the cup. And we need a thermometer to measure the temperature of the water sample. And then we're going to dissolve something into the solution. So maybe like calcium chloride. And calcium chloride, when dissolved in water, releases energy. And so the water molecules absorb that energy. And the temperature of the water is measured. And based on the change in temperature, you can calculate how much energy was absorbed by the solution. And so you can calculate the enthalpy change of calcium chloride. So this is the coffee cup calorimeter, and it needs to be sealed. Now, what you need to understand is that the coffee cup calorimeter measures the energy change at constant pressure. Because you have gas particles in the air, the pressure is going to be 1 atm at sea level. Now, in a bomb calorimeter, the energy is calculated at constant volume. So, why is this important to know? This is important to know because enthalpy is the energy that is transferred only when measured at constant pressure. So, if you wish to calculate the enthalpy of something, you want to use the coffee cup calorimeter because the enthalpy change is equal to the heat absorbed or released when measured at constant pressure. Now, in a bomb calorimeter, the energy is measured at constant volume, so you don't want to use that to calculate enthalpy. That's why this question says calculate the energy of combustion, not the enthalpy of combustion. Now, in a bomb calorimeter, you're going to have water as well, but you're going to have a separate chamber known as a combustion chamber. Let's put it on this side. And basically, it's just a container that doesn't expand. It's a rigid container. And so the volume of that container is held constant. Now, you're going to have some ignition wires that extend from the combustion chamber to outside of the bomb calorimeter. And the purpose of the ignition wires is to basically ignite the sample. Once this sample is ignited, it's going to release thermal energy into the surrounding environment. And so water is going to absorb that thermal energy. And so you need a thermometer to measure the temperature change of the water. And also you might have like a, some type of steering device to keep the fluid flowing to transfer energy throughout the entire solution. So that's the picture of the bomb calorimeter. It's similar to the coffee cup calorimeter, but you just have a combustion chamber. And just keep in mind that the energy changes are measured at constant volume. So that's important to know. So now let's focus on the problem at hand. 3.36 grams of ethanol is burned in a bomb calorimeter with a heat capacity of 2.3 kilojoules per Celsius. The temperature of the calorimeter increases from 12.1 to 55.5 Celsius. Calculate the energy of combustion per mole. So how can we do this? The energy released by the reaction is equal to the energy absorbed by the water sample. Now how can we calculate this Q? Because we're not given the specific heat capacity of water. We know what it is though, it's 4.184 joules per gram per Celsius. But we don't know the mass of water in the sample. 
So we need to calculate the Q that's absorbed by the calorimeter as a whole because we're given the heat capacity of the calorimeter. Now you need to be careful. If you wish to calculate Q and you're given the specific heat capacity, you need to use this equation, MC delta T. But if you're given the heat capacity, it's simply C delta T. And the units basically tell you that. Notice that for the heat capacity, the units are kilojoules per Celsius. So if we multiply kilojoules per Celsius by the temperature change in Celsius, it's going to give us the energy in kilojoules, which we're going to divide it by moles later. But when you're dealing with specific heat capacity, C is going to have the units joules per gram per Celsius. And so you need to multiply C by M so that the unit grams will cancel. And once you multiply by delta T, Celsius will cancel, giving you joules. Or this could be kilojoules too as well. So now let's go ahead and calculate the heat energy that's absorbed by the calorimeter. So that's going to be the heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. The heat capacity is 2.3 kilojoules per Celsius. And the change in temperature, it's final minus initial. So that's going to be 55.5 minus 12.1. So that's a change in temperature of 43.4 degrees Celsius. So if we multiply 2.3 by 43.4, that gives us 99.82 kilojoules. And because the temperature of the calorimeter increased, we could say that the process is endothermic for the calorimeter. Heat was absorbed by the calorimeter, which means that heat had to be released by the reaction. So Q of the reaction is equal to negative Q of the calorimeter. The calorimeter is the surroundings. The reaction is the system. So if the surroundings is undergoing an endothermic process, the system has to be undergoing an exothermic process. So Q of the reaction is negative 99.82 kilojoules. Now we need the energy of combustion per mole. So we have the grams of ethanol. We need to convert that to moles. But let's calculate the molar mass first. So in ethanol, we have two carbon atoms, a total of six hydrogen atoms, five plus one is six, and then just a single oxygen atom. So the atomic mass of carbon is 12.01, and the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.008, and oxygen is 16. So type that in exactly the way you see it in your calculator. So you should get a molar mass of 46.068 grams per mole. So let's start with 3.36 grams of ethanol. And let's convert it to moles. So to calculate the number of moles, you just simply have to take the mass and divide it by the molar mass. So it's 3.36 divided by 46.068. And so this is going to be 0 0.0729 moles. So now to calculate the energy of combustion per mole, we need to take the energy in kilojoules and divide it by the number of moles. So it's going to be negative 99.82 kilojoules divided by 0 0.0729 moles. So it's going to be about, if you round it to three sig figs, it's negative 1370 kilojoules per mole. So that's the energy of combustion per mole for the substance ethanol.